we finally come to the radius. That is the lateral bone of the forearm. It is articulating here with the humerus, then with the ulna proximally and distally, and also with the scaphoid and the lunate bone. We can see the humerus articulating with the radius. This is the capitulum of the humerus, while this is the head of the radius. The head has this circumference, which also articulates with the ulna, and it does so by articulating with the radial notch of the ulna. Now, if we bring back the radius, we can see here this part, and that is the constriction called the neck. And if we go a little bit more distally, we can see the radial tuberosity. That is where the biceps muscle inserts, and we will see it shortly right after we explain the bones. The radius also has three borders, just like the ulna, but there are some differences here. This is the interosseous ridge, or the interosseous border of the radius. And here is the anterior border of the radius. And then we would have here the posterior border of the radius. Now we have here the anterior surface, and we also have the posterior surface. But remember, Alna did not have the lateral surface, but the medial surface. Now, because the radius is laterally, this surface is the lateral surface. The radius distally articulates with the scaphoid and the lunate bone. We can see that this surface can be somewhat divided into two portions, and one is for the scaphoid and another part is for the lunate bone. We also have here the ulnar notch, and the ulnar notch basically accommodates the head of the ulna. On the dorsal side, we can find the dorsal tubercle here. These lessons come as part of my software called Animated Anatomy that you can purchase on animatedanatomy.com, or you can click here and subscribe for free lessons in the future.